Why, hello boys and girls, and welcome to our exam six review. Hopefully you are already preparing for this and you're quite familiar with some of the materials. Now, I want to talk a little bit about vocabulary. I'm not going to take the time during this review session to go through these terms with you, but please keep in mind that these are all fair game for the exam. Probably show up in some type of multiple choice format, but also don't be surprised if um, I asked you uh, a free response question related to these. Um, so keep these in mind as well as all of the other vocabulary terms on pages 105 to 107 of your notes. Also review pages 106 uh, through 108 um, in your notes. That talks about heats of solution. If you remember a couple of demos that we did, there was one where we took ammonium nitrate and that was a solid kiddos and we dissolved it in water, so we dissociated the ions into ammonium and nitrate ions. Remember that? And it got cold. So what side of the equation would I add heat? Let's see, if it got cold, did it give off heat? And I would put it on the product side, or did it consume heat? Well, if it got cold, it consumed heat from the surroundings. So delta H would be on the left-hand side, meaning it's an endothermic process. So most solids dissolve this way. That means if I added heat to this, that means if I warmed up my solvent, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction would be pushed to the right, and I'd be able to, to make more of these dissociated ions, or I'd be able to dissolve my ammonium nitrate better. Once again, most solids dissolve in this fashion. Now, don't forget most gases dissolve exothermically. So if I took CO2 gas and turned that into CO2 AQ, heat would be on the right-hand side. That means if I cooled this down, if I made it cold, the reaction would go to the right towards the heat and I would make more gas dissolved in water. AQ, remember, means aqueous or dissolved in water. And all gases dissolve this way. All gases dissolve better in cold solvents. So keep that in mind. Just refresh your memories by reviewing pages 106 to 108 of your notes. Now, we also spent a lot of time talking about units that describe the concentration of a solution. And there are four big ones. There's molarity, molality, mole fraction, and weight percent. So molarity, remember, is moles of solute divided by liters of the solution. And that's molarity. Molality has the same numerator, so it's moles of solute. But this time we divide by kilograms of just the solvent. And generally speaking, that's water, but we could also have other solvents. But generally speaking, we used water in our experiences. Mole fraction would be moles of the component. And usually that's going to be moles of the solute, but it could be moles of solvent if we wished. And that's divided by the total number of moles in my solution. So usually it's moles of solute divided by total number of moles, but it could be moles of solvent divided by total number of moles, depending upon what I'm asking for. And weight percent, that one's pretty easy. That's the mass of the component, and usually that's the solute, and that would be in grams, and that would be divided by the total mass of my solution, and that would be weight percent. So let's practice a few of these. Um, assume I have uh, I dissolve 2.56 grams of malic acid in its formula C48605 in half of a liter of water. Uh, we'll say 500.0 grams of water. Let's calculate the molarity, the molality, the mole fraction, and the weight percent of the acid in this solution. So let's do molarity first. Remember that's moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So I have 2.56 grams of my malic acid, C4. H6O5. Remember, we want to get moles of solute, so we have to go from grams of C4H6O5 to moles of C4H6O5. I'll put a one by mole. Let's go ahead and figure out 
the molecular mass of this substance. So let's see, we've got four carbons, and each carbon, each carbon weighs uh, 12.01 grams per mole. We've got six hydrogens, and each hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams per mole. And we have five oxygens, and each oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So I get 134.1 grams per mole. Now, um, we've gone from grams to moles of malic acid, and we need to divide by liters of solution. Now I have a half of a liter, so I'm going to divide by 0 0.500, we'll assume three sig figs in that volume, liters. So let's plug and chug and see what we get. 2.56 divided by 134.1 divided by 0 0.500 liters and to three significant figures I get 0 0.0382 molar. So the symbol for molarity kiddos is the uppercase M. All right, so that would be the molarity of that solution. Now molality is similar. Remember the numerator is the same, moles of solute. So we're going to start out the same way. 2.56 grams of C4H6O5 and we'll go from grams of C4H6O5 to moles of C4H6O5 and we already know the molecular mass is 134.1 grams per mole so grams of my solute are gone and we'll divide that by kilograms of my water so I have 500 grams of water, which of course is 0 0.5000 kilograms. And you'll notice the math in this particular case turns out to be the same, 0 0.0382 molal. Now, please be aware that molarity and molality are not always the same. In this case, the volume of my solution was 0 0.500 liters, and the mass of just my water was 0 0.5000 kilograms. And that's just coincidence, but these are not necessarily the same. In this case, it worked out nicely for us. Okay, mole fraction. Let's do the mole fraction of my solute, folks. So in this case, we have to get everything into moles. Moles of solute divided by total moles. So let's find the moles of my solute. 2.56 grams of C4 H6O5. Deja vu, we've done this a few times already, haven't we? We'll go from grams of C4, H6, O5 to moles of C4, H6, O5. So 134.1 grams per mole. Let's see how many moles that is. We haven't calculated that yet. So 2.56, show you the calculator here, folks, divided by 134.1 grams per mole. I have 0 0.0191 moles of my solute. C4, H6, O5. Now I also have to find the moles of my solvent, which is water in this case, folks. So I have 500 grams of water. Let's see, where can I do that? Let's, well, let's do that right over here. I have 500.0 grams of water. And we'll go from grams of water to moles of water. And one mole of water is 18.02 grams. So let's see how many moles of water we have. 500.0 divided by 18.02 gives me 27.75 moles of water. Now the mole fraction of my solute, kiddos, will be the moles of my solute divided by the total number of moles. So let's go ahead and do that right over here. 0 0.0191 moles of solute, C4. 8605 divided by the total number of moles, which of course is 0 0.0191 moles of my solute plus my 27.75 moles of my water. And we'll leave that as a decimal. So let's plug that in. 0 0.0191 divided by, we'll use my parentheses key, 0 0.0191 plus 27.75, close off my parentheses, and I get a mole fraction of 6.88 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that would be the mole fraction of my solute, which of course was my malic acid. Okay?
And the last thing we can calculate here is the weight percent. And that is the mass of my solute, which is my malic acid, divided by the total mass. And then, oh, we'll multiply that by 100 to change it to a percentage, of course. So let's do that right down here. We had 2.56 grams divided by the total mass of my solution. So 2.56 grams plus 500.0 grams of water. And we'll multiply that by 100 to give us a percentage. Now I noticed that some of you kiddos in class were just dividing by 500.0. Remember, it's divided by the total mass. Those that were dividing it by 500 were just dividing it by the mass of water. So be careful on that one. So let's see what we get here. Let's clear this out. 2.56 divided by, let's use my parentheses keys again, 2.56 plus 500.0. And we'll get an answer that will then multiply by 100 to change it to a percentage. Looks like I get 0.509%. 0.509%. So that would be my weight percent. Okay? Make sure you guys can do those calculations. There are other examples in your notes that you guys need to take time to do. Now, there's one more thing I want to bring up that we didn't review on this particular worksheet, and that is dilution. Remember your magic rule of dilution, M1V1 equals M2V2. So I could ask you something like this. Suppose we had 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid, and I wanted to know how much of it I needed to make 2.00 molar hydrochloric acid, and let's say I want to make 500 milliliters of that solution. Okay, so this is a dilution. I'm going from 12 molar to 2 molar. And of course, when you do a dilution, you're adding water. And of course, that will dilute it to my final volume and my molarity will be 2 molar. So let's do the math here. 12 times x, of course, is 12x. And 2 times uh, 500 is going to give me uh, 1,000. And so, let's solve for x here. We end up with 1,000 divided by 12.0. And looks like we have 83.3. 83.3 milliliters. So to make my solution, that's 2 molar, I would get 83.3 mils of my concentrated acid. And then I would uh, dilute it to a total volume of 500 mils. Now, just for the record, when you dilute an acid, the magic rule is to always add the acid to the water. So I'd actually put some water in my container. Here's my volumetric flask. Let's say that this holds 500 mils. I would put some water in here, and then I would add my 83.3 mils of acid, and then dilute it to a final volume of 500.0 mils. Okay? And then my molarity would be 2 molar. So don't forget that we did that as well. All right, next up will be some uh, net ionic equations, and that involves you memorizing your solubility rules. So I'm going to wrap up part one right now, and we'll include this on part two of our review. So we're going to pick up with molecular, ionic, and net ionic equations. See you in just a few minutes. Bye-bye.